anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Doing good, doing good, doing good. Kyle, we have a lot to do today. Do spring we? camp wrapped. We're, we're a wrap on spring camp, which means it is time to uh, update our, and actually introduce your, because last time we did this, Tony guested. Uh, you you were on paternity leave, mm-hmm. but I, we can say that now. Now that you're, we're keeping that secret for a minute. We can say that now. But um, now that Kyle's uh, back, t- Tony held held down your spot last time. We're doing my update, but your very first depth chart prediction of the off season. And this will sort of wrap up Sloop Camp, and then uh, we'll be heading into the wasteland. Yeah, sounds like fun. We'll get right into it. I, I have a feeling, Jared, after even after spring camp here that we'll have some uh a lot of similarities here, but we'll we'll just go at it here though. Kyle is officially dad and Jared is officially mom by proxy. Um Mrs. Kyle might have a thing or two to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle. All right. Where else do we start except for the quarterback? Of course. It's always it always starts with the quarterback, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so Devin Brown Devin Brown doesn't get a, his chance to to play in the spring game here. So we got to see McCord and Tristan uh throw it out. But yeah. Yeah, I I, w- I would have to give the edge right now just to McCord right now. Uh he's he's had the most experience um, with this offense here, and I, I'll just give the nod to the to the seniority person here. We said we always start with the quarterback. Oh yeah, you always start with the quarterback. Duncan says not at Iowa. Yeah, they start with the punter in Iowa. Fun, fun <laughs> Iowa fact. Um, when well, that, that... total um, not nepo baby uh, offensive coordinator of theirs. Uh, was asked if they were going to change their offense any after a completely inept offense last year. Uh, he said no. <laughs> My dad's the head coach. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I would say if it, if it was uh, if Trestle was here, he'd he'd also start with the punter too because that's that that was when they that was during the spring game. Hey, they they, it, they actually they actually like pick teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Trestle has a Heisman winning quarterback under his belt, does Kirk Ferentz. Mm, uh, I rest my case. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's Kyle McCord. Um, I've been on the, uh, yeah, I've always been Kyle McCord. Uh, not yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Kyle McCord until I, I see otherwise. Uh, some of the stuff I was hearing out of camp, I was already leaning towards Kyle McCord even before Devin Brown got hurt. Devin Brown did participate in most of the spring. I know we didn't see him in the spring game, which feels to us, the fans, like he just wasn't at spring because he wasn't in the spring game, but he was. Um, but I'm, I'm sticking with Kyle McCord. Uh, I, I've always been Kyle McCord until I see otherwise, and I've not seen otherwise. So sticking Kyle McCord, Devin Brown is still going to be your backup. I know there are people out there who might be concerned that if and of course Kyle McCord has not been named the starter let's say that Ryan Day has not yet named a starter but I don't think he's leaving uh Austin says he isn't leaving he starts next year uh I I mean I I think we talked last week about my feelings about me not necessarily thinking Kyle McCord's going to be one and done um, I talked about that last week though, but yeah. Um, and then Tristan, uh, is probably your third string. I, I don't see, uh, Kleinholtz coming in. Who's did not join the team during the spring. I don't believe I, I no, he didn't. I know that. Um, so I really don't see him coming in and becoming the third string quarterback. You're going to give that to a sixth year quarterback. In in not at Ohio State, but in college football. So you you go with you go with him. 
Um, all right, Kyle, running backs. All right, here, here's here's the interesting thing here. I a lot, lot of injuries last year here, so we got to see a lot of a lot of players running the ball. But I still I still think it's Henderson. I know you can make an argument that mine Williams should be the starter. Okay. But I, I'm still going to stick with Henderson just because of what what I've seen from him and what I think he can do here in his third year at Ohio State. I I, I just think it's Henderson. And then Williams will get a good amount of carries, but I think Henderson will get the majority of the carries, though. As as do I. If we were doing ors, which I'm not doing, I don't know if I haven't looked at Kyle's depth chart. Well, I'm not the, doing the, the only. The I'm only not doing or, any ors. No ors. The only or I have is the third running back, and that's either Hayden or Chip. Fair. Um, I'm personally not doing any ors. I I, I I'm not taking the easy way out on that. Only ors. We have are for the Buckeye rowing team. And don't forget about the uh, the Buckeye huddle morning show, which I may or may not have named. Um, anyway, the national champs and Olympic medalist right there. Yep, that is true. Um, so, yeah, I'm going Travion Henderson, Mayan Williams, Evan Pryor. One, two, three. That's my one, two, three. Ooh. Hey, Jared, where's yeah. Dallin Hayden? And Chip. Well, I only went three. Sorry. Um, I am. I, and I say this as all respect, not disrespect, but total respect to Dallin Hayden. I think Dallin Hayden is good enough to go someplace and start and might and could. If that's if that's if that's the path he chooses. I think he could very easily hop in the portal and go start somewhere. And I'm not saying he he will. I, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he's good enough to. So I, I think there's a decent chance that, that something like that could happen. Yep, fair enough. Fair enough. I'm getting a doubt. I'm getting a Hayden will stay. You listen, I'm not saying it's absolutely going to happen. I am saying, and I have said several times... I talked about it, I believe, extensively last week again. The third running back at Ohio State last year was an outlier and very weird. The third running back at Ohio State does not get many carries. Sorry. Let's move on to the wide receivers. No surprise here, Jerry. Evan will. I think Evan's going to get different. I think they're going to use Evan Pryor in a, in a, in a different way. I think, yes. yeah. Some catches, some blocking. I, I don't necessarily think there's going to be a ton of carries there, but I do think they get him on the field. Wide receivers. Yep, wide receivers. No surprise here, Jared. Uh, three wide receivers here. Um, you want to do the the X, the Y, and the slot, or the Y uh, receivers the here. The X, the Z, and the Y. Or the X, the Z, and the slot. Yes, that's what I said. Uh, I think you said Y twice, but we, we, we can move forward. Right, sure. <laughs> All right, we'll start. With, we'll start with X with Marvin Harrison. No surprise there, but the question is going to be who will be behind Marvin Harrison here. You got names like uh, Tate, Antwi. Uh, maybe maybe you have um, uh, Xavier in there, maybe. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Harvey uh, Carnell Tate as the backup there for Harrison. But uh, I think Koja will could, could get some snaps in there too, during some, uh, uh, during some games where, uh, where the Buckeyes are up by a lot. Uh, I see you guys talking about Fleming. I, I personally, I, the team does Kyle and I do as well. Currently have Fleming as a Z and Tate as an X. So, Adjust your depth chart accordingly if you choose to follow that. If you don't, then that's that's on you. Um, but I, I, at, at the X wide receiver, X and Z are made up. They're really not. I, I, I think you can draw a lot of... So Ennis will be the third wide. Maybe it fits your narrative. Well, then, okay, that's fair. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I have at the X wide receiver, Marvin Harrison, one, Kojo and Twee, two, Carnell Tate, three, although I acknowledge that um, it might be that way in September, but it might not be that way in November. Yep. Um, but we're, we're, we're talking, you know, week one here. Yeah. Ballard right, the over Z- ticks. That's once again, ba- we're talking um, about the X wide receiver and we currently have Ballard as a Z which we are about to talk about next. Yep. For the Z, I have Fleming as your starter, Ballard backing up Fleming, and then uh, Noah Rogers, who made made himself quite a name during the spring here. But I got got Noah as the third, as the uh, the third spot there in the, the Z spot. I have uh, Kion Grace as the third Z, but otherwise we agree. I do have Fleming one, Ballard two, but I think they're going to see a very similar number of snaps. I, I think there's a real set starter, Marvin Harrison at X. I think there's a real set starter in the Y spot, um, which we'll get to in a second. But I think you see a, a decent rotation between Fleming and Ballard at the Z. I hope Fleming uh, shuts you all up and is awesome this season. I I think so. I mean, Fleming was the number one, not wide receiver, not you, us. Hey, you're the one saying it. Let's not get into a Smokey the Bear only who can stop forest fires type argument here. Um, and if you get that reference, I appreciate you. The, but yeah, I I think it's. I think it's Fleming. I think it's Ballard. And I think it's probably like 60, 40 on, on snaps. No, it's a specific Simpsons reference. Not, not just Smokey the bear. There was a, there, there is the, there is a deeper second level to that reference. Um, and that, that, I mean, that's Homer, but that's not, that's not the specific reference. All right, Kyle, uh, by the way, I think Noah Rogers could, there's too many damn wide receivers. Y'all. There are. Uh, yeah. How, how, Kyle, how are you and I going to sit here and have an argument between Grays and Noah Rogers? You're not. We're just going to move yeah, on to the that, Y. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, though. There's too many <laughs> damn good wide receivers. Who transfers? People. Uh, I, I, I cannot. Do not want I mean, to. We don't speculate on that. I mean, I, I literally speculated on that in regards to Hayden. But I think the reason why I, I speculated on that in regards to Hayden is because it's a compliment to him. Um, but any of the wide receivers, if I say that about, um, it, it's, it's, it doesn't feel complimentary. So I'm mm. not going to do that. It's that, that to me is the line into when I'm going to talk about a transfer and when I'm not is when it's, a the, the, the speculation is a compliment, which I feel like with Hayden, it is. It's better to speculate in regards to you are too good, not you aren't good enough. Yes, exactly. Awesome. All right, let's let's move on to the why. Yeah, our slot wide receiver, our JSN role. Um, Mecca Buka has this on lock. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah, this is you know I said Marvin Harrison's lock at X, Mecca Buka's lock at Y. I do think Fleming is a is is a lock as a starter. At at Z, but like I said, Ballard's going to get a lot of a lot of snaps as well. Xavier Johnson, I think, will get his fair share of snaps at the slot. Um, you you could see, you could potentially see Cardinal Tate get some snaps here. You could potentially see Brandon Ennis, who's not yet uh, yep. on campus, get some snaps here as well. Um, but man, the wide receiver room is just dirty deep. It's, it's, it's insane. Yeah. I found myself underrating a Mecca. Yeah. It's Mecca is so underrated because he plays with Marv. Yeah. Honestly, it was kind of like, um, I mean, it was, it was a lot like JSN. One of the reasons why his season was so amazing. I'm not taking anything away from JSN, but it's like, there was a Lave and Wilson. And then it's like, Oh, that, look, who's this guy? And it was just, you know, not fair. Who was ranked higher than Tate? Um, and en- Ennis was. Ennis was the top wide receiver in the class. That's your point. I know. 
I'm very aware. I'll also point out that Marvin Harrison was not the top rated wide receiver in his in among the wide receivers committed to Ohio State. You didn't read both messages. Oh, my bad. My bad. Um, yeah, so I, I, I got a Mecca as well. And the question is going to be who's who's going to be his backup. And I'll go I'll go with the uh, the Swiss Army knife himself. X. I'll go with yeah. X. Uh, which means recruiting measurements are a joke. No, um, it just means recruiting measurements are incredibly difficult. That's it. Um, half of the players on on average between 40 and 50 percent of the players. No, not a joke. Just very, very difficult. I'm about to give you a decent number as to why 40 to 50 percent of the players who are ranked a five star. No, that's not. The, what's the, what's the stat? Um, I believe historically 50 percent of the first rounders are either four or five star players. Um, players, which projecting someone all the way from high school to the NFL, if you're getting a 50% on that, that's an insanely good ratio. Considering there's only 35 stars, I think like 204 stars, and then hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of three star players. The fact that only half of them are three stars tells you that the recruiting services are doing a really good job because, again, projecting that far out, the fact that they hit that high of a ratio is damn impressive. Or do five and four stars uh, just get more exposure? Um. Go to more camps. Except, yeah, play, players get... This is why I always say Ohio players are underranked early in the recruiting process because they because of Ohio High School Athletic Association stuff. They aren't allowed to camp as much. So they end up moving up later in the rankings later. But anyway, this is... We're, we're, we're off topic. We're off topic. Kyle, tight ends. Tight ends. You got to start with Stover here. Stover is your is your main tight end here, but we're definitely going to see multiple tight end, um, different formations here. So the question is going to be who's going to get that second spot, and I think I think uh, Scott is going to be your your number two tight end there, and then third there, I I put in Royer. I put in Royer as the third spot, and then the incoming freshman uh, Thurman. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't, I can't disagree with you. Um, I kind of can't help but think, I didn't do any ors, but the, if I was going to do one or, if you give me one or for the entire depth chart, it might be or G. Scott or G. Uh, G Scott and Royer for the second tight end, because I just believe it's it's situational, right? Um. I just think it's situational um, between, you know, do you put in G Scott or do you put in Joe Royer? Oh, uh, but yeah, I do have Cade Stover as, as the number one guy, but as Kyle said, watch out for Julian Thurman. All right. Okay. Now, 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 now the big one here, Jared, the offensive. Jale- line yeah. Line. I'm the- saying it wrong. Yeah, the slobs. Jaleas. The slobs J- and- I'm, I'm saying it wrong. I know I am. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the slobs here, Jared. Do we have to talk about the slobs? I would rather not. It's well, it's literally the most important. It's literally the most. It's the, the hey, Ohio State. Hey, Jared, Ohio State. You know, what's the chances? What's the chances? I think the defense is going to be a lot better. Uh, I, I, I don't think we're going to take that big of a step back on quarterback. What, what do you think? What do you think? And I was just like, man, it's it's all up to the offensive line. Um, I'm going, I'm going to cheat on my prediction here. It's bad. <laughs> it's not good right now. 
Jared talking well, to the offensive line coach. No, it. Li- I mean, it. It literally is. All um, right, Jared. I'm so, gonna cheat in the depth chart prediction. All right. Um, I'm kind of cheating too, but go on. <laughs> I am putting an offensive tackle to be named later as the starting left tackle. I this is oh. a this is an oh I I am putting a portal player a yet to be named portal player at left tackle. Tra- yeah, transfer left tackle. Yeah, Austin exactly. That is who I'm putting at left tackle. A yet unnamed player from the transfer portal. Uh, Gangland Until that, says, so Fryer back at right? Yes, exactly. Until that happens, I have Fryer at left. I but think. If there is, but if there is somebody that Ohio State would get and can start in the left tackle, then yes, I would put Fryer to the right. But as it stands right now, until that actually happens, I still have, I have Fryer as a left tackle. And then, um, Michalski, um, Michalski, excuse me, as your um, starting right tackle, and then flip flop them as your um, backup there. Um, Austin says I think they end up with the San Diego State guys. It's is it Simmons. Um, yeah, take Tegra. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a good point there. Uh, oh, I'll I'll, uh, take, I'll, take I'll get there. I'll get there. I, I um, think Tegra would be a, would be a good um spot there as a backup for for the tackles i i I like that yeah my uh, reports out of reports out of camper that tegra's uh, a monster run blocker and i'll I'll leave it at that um (laughs) um the uh the san diego state guy i i think if if he wants to come you take him but I don't know if he's the answer to your prayers at left tackle. Um, I might be more of a a depth guy. I if if you're looking for someone who can, if you're looking for someone who can absolutely come in and become the national champion level left tackle, I don't think that's your guy. But. Depth is still needed, so they still might end up taking him. Um, so left tackle, transfer guy to be named later is the starter, and I have uh, Zen Mikowski as your backup left tackle. And at right tackle, I have Josh Fryer being backed up by Tiger Chabola. Uh, no shot. Montgomery sees time, right? Not this year. Um. He he's under it, it. It's incredibly, incredibly difficult to play tackle as a freshman, um, and he, I, he doesn't have the size yet. He needs some time in the weight room. He has, I believe, I believe Montgomery has a great future at Ohio State. I really, really do. But I believe he has a great future, not a not a great present. <laughs> Get him on the HGH. This isn't Clemson. Oops, did I say that out loud? Uh. Guards, Kyle, let's talk guards. I think the guards are pretty set. I think the guards are set. The left guard is Donovan Jackson. Your right guard is Matt Jones. And backing think, up, and I think backing up the left guard would be uh, Chris Min, and then Vamahi would be backing up Matt Jones. Um, yeah, I kind of think Vamahi might be... Maybe both of the backup, but yeah, I, I also don't disagree. But here, here, here's the wrench, Kyle. Here's mm-hmm. the wrench in the plan with the guards. What if you don't get that left tackle out of the portal? What if you What if you don't find that guy? Well, if there's you don't a, find, yeah, if you don't find that guy, I I I still think the guards would. No, well, yeah, that, that's that. They won't move Donovan. I, they won't move him. Donovan is staying at guard. Austin seems, seems very insistent. I know that's what they want, Austin. But I also know what the offensive tackles look like during the spring this year. Yeah. 
I'm I'm just not closing the door on it. And I'm just maybe I'm just trying to add a little bit of drama to it because as Kyle pointed out, the guards are are, are kind of set. Tony and Tom even said, I love Tony and Tom. They they aren't wizards. Um, and I have my opinion too. <laughs> I I they don't want to move Donovan Jackson out. That is not what anyone wants. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> I think if they don't get a transfer, Jared, you, you put Fryer out on left tackle and then uh uh Mikowski would be a right tackle then. I mean, so we're just back at where we were at camp then. Yes. I mean, maybe. I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's out of the question. Tom needs an emoji. Put, put it in creative request. I'll make it happen. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think it's totally out of the question. No one wants it. That's not anyone's plan, but desperate times, desperate measures, and it might come to that. Because, okay, guys, imagine this. What if Fryer gets hurt? I don't even want to think Is about it, that, Jared. Are, are we still saying there's absolutely zero chance that they move... Donovan Jackson out the left tackle. <laughs> hey, Jared, real quick, go fuck yourself. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Let's just hope that doesn't happen. Let's just hope that does not happen. All right. Listen, I'm just trying to, by the way, I Carlos know. Hinsman at center, uh, Jacob James yes. is backup. Yes. Yeah. Carson Carson is just maybe stud should have been gone a really, while ago. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. We waited a year or two late on that one. Let's just listen, guys. I just hope that there's a left tackle who's an immediate starter who enters the portal uh, and who wants to come to Ohio State. Does does Rutgers have another another uh, left tackle? That's a that's a real stud that wants to come to Ohio State. And play guard here. <laughs> What's up with the guy That's from right. USC? Yeah. He was a guard. Yeah, you're right. Yes, my bad. Yeah, you're 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 confusing. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. We need to move forward. Um, defense, defense, Jared. Yes. Uh, strong side defensive end. Um, no surprise. I no I think surprise. this is this is written in stone. JTT's your starter. Caden Curry's his backup. Write it in blood. Write it I, in stone. I thought Jared. I thought Jared. He didn't like being called that. Yeah, I, my apologies. You're you are correct. JT. JT. Tui Molowau. Uh, my, my apologies. My apologies. My apologies. <laughs> um. Right. Uh. Yes. Agreed. JT and Caden, your strong side defensive ends. Weak side is. Jack Sawyer. Yeah. And put in uh, Kenyatta Jackson as Sawyer's backup there. I agree. Um, I Kenyatta Jackson had a, a, a wildly productive camp. Yep. Uh, we all knew, we all knew Caden Curry was going to be in the, he was going to be like the third defensive end, probably the strong side guy. Um, I would say uh, don't, don't lose sight on Amari Abor as well. I I think he could uh he's probably your fifth defensive end, I would I would venture a guess. Uh excited to see Curry develop this year. Me too. I want less DE rotation though, to be honest. It's uh, honestly uh, it's kind of hard to keep Caden Curry off the field, but it's also really hard to take Tui Molo out off the field. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, although Caden Curry's big and strong enough that he could play like a three tech in obvious passing situations. He could, but then, but then how, who are you going to remove? As, as is JT for that matter. <laughs> who are you going to remove? <laughs> right. Cause Tyleek Williams and Mike Hall, 
uh, aren't exactly bad <laughs> pass rushers at the defensive tackle positions. Yeah. Yep. So your your um your four tech though, uh, your four tech though. Who do you have as the backup? Um, three tech. Uh, or, sure, uh, three tech. Sure, three tech. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever you want to go. I said four tech, but you go. <laughs> three tech. Uh, your defensive tackle uh, is is Tylik Williams. I think that's yeah. Everyone, that, that's 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 written in blood as well. That's that's that's. Um, I think the I think the better, more interesting question, Kyle. Do you need more sleep? He's still got a newborn at home. <laughs> um, the 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 biggest question mark if we're talking like too deep along the defensive end is who's the backup three tech. Um, I have Jaden McKenzie written down. Um, I, I'm not totally sure about that. That's again, you go down, uh, you know, there's eight names here in the two deep in for the defensive line. Uh, the, mm-hmm. the biggest question mark, the biggest, and I better write this very lightly in pencil situation. It's probably Jaden McKenzie as Tyler Williams back up at the three tech. Okay. Yeah, that's when I was going through all the names there. That's that's the name that I I kind of put in there behind Tyleek was Jaden there, uh, and then and then behind Mike Hall I have uh, Hamilton. Yeah, it, the, uh, yeah, under the nose tech. Yeah, every nose other tackle. every other spot I feel incredibly confident in. Mike Hall's mm-hmm. your starting nose. Ty Hamilton's his backup. Tyleek Williams, your starting three tech. We already talked about the defensive ends. I'm I'm just solid on all of those except for the second string uh three tech. I'm just not sure there. Okay. All right. Now it comes to the confusing part here, the uh the back line the the players behind the defensive line here. You almost called him the back line. The back line. I did. You? I almost did. Kyle, I almost did. Kyle, my, is it that hard? Man, you well, need sleep. Is it that hard? Well, depending depending on the formation, well, it, it well, can be. Yes. Kyle's not saying who's gonna play. Yeah, you, Steel Tommy. Exactly. The the it comes down. The difficult thing comes down to: Are there three linebackers, or are there two linebackers and a jack? Or are there? Do you, you see what I mean? It's not. It's not necessarily like if we're talking like two linebackers, then yeah, it's Steel Chambers, Tom Eichenberg. No, no one's saying otherwise. Is there a Jack position? Is there a Sam linebacker position? Is there a? This is where it gets sketchy. Um. The Jack will have two guys, Melton Hicks. Um, that's that is in a Sam. Uh, it is Simon. It isn't hard. Um, see, I. It's it's not. It's more of an issue of definition, and like who? How do you put together a starting eleven with all these hybrid roles? I I think. Again, it's it just it, it just gets a little difficult is all as far as defining the positions and and whatnot. So um, so let's start let's start with that then. So the middle linebacker, no surprise here. It's going to be um, Tommy Pickles here. Yeah, what we do know is that there's a middle linebacker, and what we do know is that Tommy Eichenberg is him. Um, now, who is his backup? A lot of people are going to be like Simon. It's Simon. Jared, why are you even asking? It's Cody Simon. Yes, that's what I have. I have I have Cody Simon as the backup. In the same way that I talked about Dallin Hayden, I'm going to talk about Cody Simon. Cody Simon, I think, is too damn good to spend his last year at Ohio State as a backup linebacker. I think he's too damn good for it. He has another year, doesn't he? 
Uh, yeah, I believe he has the 2020 year, so he could, yep. in theory, come back. He does, in theory, have an extra year of eligibility. Um, but, again, like, yeah, and Hicks will start at linebacker next year. We know this. Uh, I But I think Hicks is behind Chambers, right? That He's your weak side linebacker. Um, so, I, I think next year it's very possible that your starting linebackers are CJ Hicks and Gabe Powers. I just, nah, Simon will start if he stays, if he stays. I'm not sure he does. I think he's too damn good to be a backup another year. So who you have as the backup then Jared Gabe Powers. Game powers. Okay. I just all right. In the the weak the weak side here, I I have Steel Chamber, so it's going to be Steel and Tommy as your as your two linebackers there. Then to back up Steel Chambers, I have I have CJ Hicks there, but that doesn't mean CJ Hicks is the backup because I have CJ Hicks as the starter for the Jack position there. Whenever they want to put in a third linebacker. Um, I'm just, yeah, to me, I'm just going to call it a, where, what's, something's missing in my notes. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think to me, I'll just call it a, a strong side defensive end or excuse me, not, excuse me, the, uh, I'll call it the strong side linebacker. Maybe it's a jack. Maybe it's a strong side linebacker. Whatever, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, I do think it's. I think it's Hicks, and I think it's Melton if Melton stays. Um, I don't know. Whatever, whatever you want to call it. it. Whenever they need like a third body on the field, I think it'll be Hicks, and I think it'll be uh, and or Melton. Um. Plus, I think we see a lot less Jack this year, Austin says. I agree. If Jack yeah. if Jack means taking a defensive lineman off the field when you have this amazing selection of defensive linemen, then don't do it. Yeah. Now, if putting a Jack on the field means taking a safety off the field, which could translate into taking Ransom or Styles off the field... Don't do it. I, I, the Jack sounded like a fun idea. And I think that there are, there will be packages in the future of Ohio state for it. To me, put your four linemen out there and let them eat. Yep. All right. Jack should be a pa- a, a package, not a position. Yeah. I don't know. It works if you're Oklahoma State in the Big Twelve. See, yeah, the uh, the Big Twelve in general is a lot more spread out than the Big Ten. Um, that's not always true. There are certainly exceptions in both directions. Put your four put your four linemen down. Let them eat. Uh, that's that's how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get to the uh, defensive backs here. Your number one corner, Denzel Burke. No, no question there. The question is: the question is, who's your who's your number two cornerback? Who's going to be the the other corner on the other side of the field? Iggy. I'm getting a lot of getting a lot of Iggy's in the chat. Um, Ooh, yeah. Make it easier for Jared. Igbenosa. Mm-hmm. Got it. No. Are you telling me no? It been Osin. I been Osin. Okay. It really. Okay. Sure. I am not going to try and pretend I'm right when it comes to pronouncing a thing. I, but I thought I was right. But whatever. I can't announce. I can't pronounce names. It's fine. Uh, I, I do think like Denzel Burke, I think is your solid cornerback one. 
absolutely solid cornerback one. And as Kyle says, um, Big Ben Oson, and I saw some of you guys say Hancock as well. I think Igben Oson is personally, that's that's where I'm going for my starter. But I think there'll be a lot of rotation. I think they'll both see a lot of time. I think there'll be a lot of rotation. Um, there'll be a lot of hot hand. So yeah, they'll I both think, see a I, lot of playing time. I'll, I'm going to give the nod to Igben Oson. I'm I'm almost there. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of crap in the chat here, but I'm I'm going to go with Hancock right for right now. But yeah, I I really like uh, Igbenosin right now. Um, I really like him and kind of like what you said before. Um, first game against uh, Indiana, yeah, probably the nod to Hancock. Game against Michigan State in October sometime. Okay, maybe maybe Davis Davison will get the nod there. Yeah, I mean, again, I think it. who starts isn't super relevant. I think that there'll just be a decent rotation between them. Yeah, and, um, then, your, and then your fourth uh, corner is going to be uh, Jair Brown. Yeah, I think Jair Brown's probably your backup to Denzel Burke. I, I think that's just your fourth. That's going to be your fourth, uh, your fourth corner. Whenever the fourth one's going to come in, that's... That's Jerry, whether it's behind Burke or behind uh, the second cornerback. He's just your fourth one to come in. Austin says all the guys you're talking about will get playing time. It's just a matter of how much. Yeah. Burke, number one. Igben Oson and Hancock are going to get roughly two a, equal. Two um, and Jair Brown's probably your third guy. Again, assuming health. Fourth. Yada, yada, yada. Did yeah. I say third? You said third, yeah. All right. Um, so I actually put in here the Nickelback as well, Jared. Nickelback, cover safety. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Um, whatever. It doesn't, again, it's sort of like, do we call it a Sam linebacker? Do we call it a, a Jack? What, what? Whatever. I don't care. Um, Nickelback, cover safety, wh- whatever. Um, I think it's I think it's Cam Martinez. I think that's yep. I think that's pretty locked in, in my opinion. Yeah, I I think so too. Um, Martinez, I've I, I really like what I'm seeing from Martinez, so I I'm, I'm going to give the nod to him, and then uh, and then Carter will be the backup there. Yeah, Jahad Carter. Um, he's the transfer. Uh, I'm not a hundred. I'm still not a hundred percent. Yeah. Jad Carter is an enigma to me. Austin says I kind of agree. Um, I kind of agree. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure myself. Um, so I'm not super confident in putting him as like the second guy in the cover safety role. Um, but that's, that is just where I'm going to put him for now. That could be totally wrong. I think we would have seen in the spring game if he didn't get dinged up. Yeah, he had. A, I don't. I don't know if they ever said officially what it was, but it's something like a sprained knee. Um, it wasn't serious, but it also was enough to keep him out of the spring game. I think there was a pretty low threshold, high threshold. I'm not sure which direction to say that, but like it didn't take a lot to to keep someone out of the spring game. Do we have, which is like really good, but do we have 80 overalls? Are you, are you talking like, oh, um, Jad Carter's enigma to me because I don't know how good he is. He feels like a 75 overall player. Um, So are we just talking like Madden numbers? Is that what we're doing? It made sense in your head. No, I I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, but you know, I, I I feel you. Like a seventy-five overall safety is really good. I no, I, I feel what you're saying. Um, but Sunny Styles exists. I don't think they're the same mold of player. 
I, I don't think they're directly competing for playing time. As we will talk about here in a second. But you aren't but uh, they aren't, but you can only put 11 out at a time. Yeah, but I don't think you necessarily sub one for the other. Yeah. I, I don't think they're com- directly competing for playing time. Um, All right. In the other, the other two safeties here, Jared, we have uh, Josh Proctor, your starter for the free safety, and Ransom as your strong safety. But. Yeah. But. Got to watch out for number six, trying to steal some playing time from Ransom. Yeah, I, it, I think I, I think you'll I think you will start seeing more and more styles. I at the strong lot, safety, lot the up of, safety, the whatever you call it, um, they call it the bandit or something, um, or was that the cover guy? I don't remember. Oklahoma State names weird. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But he's he's the up safety, but he's also mm-hmm. also kind of the Sam linebacker, but in the other direction. Uh, see, this is where yeah. things get fuzzy, right? Yep. Strong, up, and free. Strong, free. No, well, no, the, the box and the strong would be the same. So, I mean, to me, it's strong safety, free safety. So, you have your strong safety, who's sort of a linebacker. You have your free safety, who's like your one deep guy. And yep. then your nickel safety slash nickel. Uh, yeah. Your cover safety slash nickelback, who's also kind of a corner, kind of like your like a yeah like a third cornerback in a way. Are you sure? I I mean yes. that's how. <laughs> those are the roles they play. I know that they. I know Knowles has given them some funny names with the Jacks and the Bandits and all that, and I'm not 100 percent sure how all of that works all of the time. Basically, what it is, if we're if we're gonna try and make it super simple. You take, you have a new sloopcast rule. Okay. You take your, you take your strong side linebacker off of the field. And now you you take him out and then you just kind of have a new amorphous position out there. Sometimes that new amorphous position is a third linebacker. Who's also kind of a defensive end or you have that third linebacker. Who's also kind of a strong safety or you sometimes have that third linebacker or that third safety who's also sort of a corner. And the idea being is that it makes it harder to package against. It gives you a little bit more variety with, with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Rule 16, we don't know our <laughs> defensive position names. I We, from day one, when Knowles came in and started throwing all of these new positions around, we said from day one, well, the Jack is just a defensive end Sam linebacker hybrid. And the ups, the the third safety, the covers, that is the bandit. The bandit's just a safety. He's a corner. He's a corner. It's a corner safety. It's a cover safety. You know what I mean? It's just whatever Mm -hmm. we come up with these goofy names, but they're just hybrid between the, between two other positions. And for the record, not the first ones to do that. Yeah. Ohio state's had cover safeties in the past and they've had linebackers slash safeties in the past. It's not, it's not new. Hell, if you go back to the nineties, basically all strong safeties were linebackers, except in the, back in those days, back in my day, be an old man for a second. Back in my day, the the strong safety was your fourth linebacker instead of your third linebacker. You know, you get your eight guys in the box. It's four down defensive linemen, three linebackers, and here comes the safety is the fourth linebacker. Well, now that strong safety is just playing a third linebacker because the game has gotten smaller, more spread out, and faster as opposed to bigger. (laughs) Boomer alert. Boomer alert. All right, just just to finish up the safety talk here, uh, Ransom, you're strong. Proctor, you're free safety. Styles, you're back up to Ransom. And uh, Kai Stokes, you're back up to Proctor. By the way, anyone playing along at, at home, we had Sonny Styles as both a potential strong side linebacker. I did anyway. 
he's a potential strong side linebacker and a potential strong safety, which kind of makes him the perfect strong safety if he's playing both. It doesn't matter. What does matter, Jared? Styles is, is going to get on the field. It kind of doesn't matter what position we assign to whatever the hell he's doing. Yeah. What does matter, Jared, is who is going to replace Noah Ruggles? Probably Parker Lewis, unless unless there's another uh, kicker from the Triangle area that. Ohio State wants to steal, as as we have a tendency to do. What sucks so much is that the name now makes you sad, and he doesn't deserve that. No, he doesn't. It was a difficult kick. Um, who cares? Just score touchdowns, you know. But they're still kickoffs. <laughs> you still have to worry about kickoffs. Yes, yes, yeah. And how how many Buckeye fans just complain anytime that ball goes out of bounds? That's the coach's fault. That's the coach's fault. If if your kicker can't do that on a consistent basis, then don't ask him to. All right. Uh, Hunter Murko moving on. Uh, (laughs) God, if there is there, is there any more sure? Honestly, how is there any player currently on the roster 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 that you're sure more sure that's going to play is going to start all 13 games. Oh, I'm sure there's, there's quite a few that we named here, Jared. <laughs> yeah. But the punter is probably one of the least likely to get hurt. Yeah. There you go. The long snapper. The long snapper. I said, name, I said, name a player. So you can't just say long snapper. All right, uh, the kick returner here. Can we have a moment to appreciate the current run on Ohio State punters? Yeah, no, it's Ohio State's been solid at the punter position for for a while. At least, what, 12 years? Austin said 10 to 15. Yeah, I mean, without actually looking it up, Ohio State's been since Cam. Yeah, I mean, at least since Cam. Yeah, Johnston. All right. The returners here, Jared. I'm still I'm still I still want my my return here. We still it's still waiting for that good return touchdown here. That all that I'm that we're just so eager to to uh to have here. Who who's gonna be your returners here, Jared? Uh, kick return. I have Xavier Johnson, Jaden Ballard, who are essentially same here. Those are like your fourth and fifth receivers. Um, with all due respect to Cardinal Tate, who you could also see back there. Yeah, I I have yes, I have back. I have X and Ballard as the kickoff return as well, and then for the punt return, uh, I got Abuka returning it. But for Abuka's backup, I have I have Ballard back there as well. I have Abuka as well, but I have Carnell Tate as the backup. I don't know though. You, you know, you know, <laughs> having a having a true freshman trying to return punts. It's... Who is going to be the play caller? Some amalgamation of Ryan Day and and Hartline. Sorry, Kyle. Oh, okay, you're good. Austin was yelling. It's his fault. <laughs> t- t- Tony says here, um, Tony Gerdeman, uh, his starter for the kick return is uh, um, <clears throat> this position no longer exists in college football. Not wrong. No, he's not wrong. <laughs> It is mostly true, yes. Except when Ohio State coaches decide to get fancy with it and try and drop the kickoff return. Oh, man, if you aren't old enough, as the greatest kick returner ever lived right there in the... Yep. 
I'm blanking on Where his name, it? though, for the audio listeners. Can Hester. Someone... Devin, Devin Hester. Hester. Devin Hester. Yeah. You know Cordell who else Patterson is up there? Up there. He, he... Uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's been so, so many. I mean, Deion Sanders was a great one, too. Especially on sure the punt was. return. On the punt return, especially. Yeah, there, there's been some great ones. Um, I think Devin Hester was the best, though. Yes. Yes. All right, Jared, that is our depth chart as of April 23rd. <laughs> 24th, Kyle, 24th. That's when we release it. 23rd this. of record, 24th we release it. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's it. Um, I think that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, I'll do a quick plug. Um, if you want to buy... Um, actually, no, Patreon. Let's talk Patreon. Everyone... Our Patreon, I think, is currently at 19, 19 contributors. If you've been thinking about it, can we get up? Let's get up to 20. Let's get up to 25. If you've been thinking about it, let's get it up to 25. That's it. It's only $3 a month. If you don't want a monthly payment, it's something like thirty two fifty for the year. Um, so just like one payment, good for the year, thirty two fifty. Um honestly, if I, I can sell you on the benefits you get, the you can join all these hooligans down here in the Discord chat and listen to us live. You can get the episodes ad free into your podcast feed, you can get early access to there's there there are benefits. I am just humbly asking that if you listen to the show. I'm so, I mean, forget the benefits for a second. I am simply humbly asking that if you listen to the show and you've listened for the show to a long time and maybe just do it for one year. Don't even feel like you have to re up it in, in 12 months. If, if we've ever, if we have during kind I've been doing this since 2015, if we have provided you with 32, dollars and 50 cents worth of entertainment since you've started listening maybe just help us out maybe just help us out that's all that's all i'm saying and again there are benefits there's actual benefits to you signing up but that's not even that's not even what i'm trying to do right now i'm just like if you feel like we've if we've provided hours and hours of hours of entertainment maybe just throw us three dollars a month and and do it for like 12 months and then cancel after that if if you want to. All right. Uh Jared buy Jared's house for $2 no no. No, my house is much more expensive than that. I know I pay taxes. Um <laughs> Columbus taxes. That's, that's Jared just, is that's trying that's to move to Ann Arbor. Jared. What that, the hell? That's just that's just everywhere Jared, not just Columbus. <laughs> Franklin County, you know what, Kyle, let's not get me started on, on property taxes in Franklin County, Ohio, which were deemed uh, non-constitutional, I don't know, 20 years ago, yet we keep doing it. But we're not talking about that right now. What we are talking about is whatever's in Kyle's corner. Kyle, what's in Kyle's corner? Sure. Um, we're not going to go too deep in this. Uh, I think this is going to This is be a shallow off- corner this week. Yeah, this is an off-season discussion here, but... The NCAA decides they want to change rules oversighting. No, you can't get the, me started uh, on this. The uh, running clock. I'm pushing my microphone away because I simply can't. Get... Kyle, we're going to talk about this on another episode because we have talked about this on another episode. I, I can't even get started on this. I'm pushing the microphone away. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of, a lot of disappointment, a lot of, uh, hate towards this, but yeah, like what Jared said, we'll talk about this in another episode. So, because there's some good idea, there's some there's some better ideas that other sports currently do that can make the game better. It might not be next week, but it will It'll be sometime probably... during the wasteland. I tell you what, Kyle, let's make this promise. Kyle and I are going to put together a proposal to fix 
the way college football is broadcast. So we had fixing college football. Now we're going to have fixing the, the broadcasting college, of the college broad, football. College football broadcasting. Thank you. That's a better way of saying that. We're going to do that there sometime in May. I'm just letting you know right now it's coming. We're going to work yeah, on it. I think next, next week. Next week we're going to talk about uh, the the NFL draft. So will we? I, kind on, of, honestly, kind what of. is what is there really to talk about other than to just say, oh. Oh, um, CJ Stroud was drafted by, I think we're presuming the, the Texans right now, but whatever. I don't know. How much insight do we have on that? I don't know. Um, I think next week, Kyle, I think next week we do, um, a new mock class. I think a lot has happened recruiting wise. Fuck the draft. I love the draft. I'm going to watch the draft, but I just don't know what unique things you and I have to say about it. I think next week we just say, forget the draft and we do a new mock class, a new mock recruiting class. Um, Jared, I have to give you a caveat of, you still have to keep the NCAA pockets deep. Of course. Oh, by the way, it's not the NCAA. It's, it's the conferences because that has to be part of it or it'll just never happen. Whomstever, yes. It's the schools and the conferences and the broadcasting partners. The broadcasting partners have to make their money. And actually, it's really just the broadcasting partners that have to make their money because the conferences already made their money in the rights deal. So really, it's just about the the broadcasters making money is is really what's happening. Yep, yep. All right, that's it, Jared. That is all we have for today's episode. Yes. Uh, tonight's ending music um, will be. I like that we're just like talking about upcoming shows. By the way, in the month of May, will it be May? No, it'll still be April, right? No, it will be May. Uh, next episode is in fact in May. During the month of May, we will be fixing broadcasting in college football. We'll have a new post spring camp um, mock class. Um, we might do an entire episode of why Brady Quinn sucks, um, but probably not, but maybe, uh, but I tell you what month of May, we already have two episodes planned and that sounds like a lot of fun. So, but that's, those are for upcoming weeks. So look forward to those, you know, where to find us and tonight's ending episode we brought to you by a band out of Cincinnati. Uh, they're called saving escape. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to listen to local music, drink local beer, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Saving Escape.